Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I just think you want to. And this first song is a hymn. It's called, oh, Come, O Spirit, Dwell Among Us. Just as birds can suddenly appear, um, so it is sometimes with God's Spirit. Sometimes we can become overcome. And um, so this hymn is, is all about that and looks forward to that. It says, Come, O Spirit, Dwell Among Us. I'm going to sing um, the first verse by myself, and I invite you all to join me on verse 2. And the slide will say, congregation joins in or something.
Well, again, welcome. This um, is going to be kind of an interesting series for us together because it's, it's worship, it's study, it's personal quiet devotion time, and um, it's going to be very organic. And when I think about the trends that are taking place in worship today and, and some of the new things that are happening in the church, a lot of it has to do with this whole idea of just being a little bit more organic. And what I mean by that is that worship is no longer um, a spectator sport. We don't just show up Sunday morning and have these trained people in front of us do their thing and we kind of just sit and watch and enjoy and then critique it. Um, worship. <laughs> We're called to worship all the time. Our entire lives are to be spiritual services of worship. That's what scripture says. And so the trends that are taking place are, are very organic like this, where you come together just as, as if there were people gathering around a table at your home. Worship began when you walked in the door. Um, and so every week, that's what it's going to be like. We invite you to participate, not just by singing and by being here, but by maybe volunteering to bring some soup, um, maybe sticking around afterward and helping to clean up. Um, that's all part of this experience, everything, from the cooking and the cleaning to the singing and the, and the, worship, and the teaching, all right? So I'm glad you're here, um, and I want to start by saying, how many of you knew what a murmuration was before you came tonight? I knew you would. <laughs> I, I, how did I know that? Any, did you ever know, anybody else knew what a murmuration was? Have you ever seen something like that, those starlings? Have you seen that? I had never seen that until um, I saw this video online. And it reminds me so much of the spirit that the way those, those starlings move, to me, are very reflective of the way I understand the spirit coming and going and, and um, just moving in ways in our lives that we just can't predict and often that we don't understand. That is what we're going to be focusing on over the next five weeks together. This whole idea of God's Spirit working and moving. Um, and primarily, because it's Lent, we're going to look at the way the Spirit's moving through the words of Jesus on the cross. The Seven Last Words is a series that probably every pastor in the country has at one time or another preached. Um, we're only going to tackle five of them, hence the title of this series, Cross words. Um, but before we get too far into that, you've already had the chance to, um, to meet Nicole, but let me just introduce her a little bit more. Nicole is a dear friend, a singer-songwriter, a great, um, a, a wise spiritual person, well beyond her years. And so her voice is going to be one that's going to be working with us through this series. I hope you will make her feel warmly welcome each um, Wednesday evening. Thanks for coming up and for being part of this. <clears throat> All right, let me, um, let me just jump right in with some scripture readings for us. Can we do that? You ready for some scripture? Actually, um, how about I do this? Who would like to read Psalm 22 for us? Amy, do you have, you have a Bible? You could not have been raised in the Presbyterian Church if you brought a Bible. <laughs> and I need one more person to just read one verse from Matthew 27, and I've got it right here for you. Anybody? Carol? I want to pass that back to Carol. <clears throat> the, the words of Jesus, the first set of words from the cross that we're going to tackle tonight come from Matthew 27, but they have their origins in the Psalms. And so Amy is going to read that passage for us, for us now. Um, why don't you just read verses 1 through 11. Okay. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why you are so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. Yet you are holy and throned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you, and you rescued them. They cried out to you, and you were saved. They trusted in you, and you were never disgraced. But I am old. Warm, I am, but I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying, Is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. 
If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. Yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb and let me tr- and led me to trust you at my mother's breast. I was thrust into your arms at my birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. Do not stay so far from me, for <coughs> trouble is near, and no one else can help me. Okay. And Matthew. Carol? He didn't tell me there was another language in here. <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> and about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That good. is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay, allow those uh, words to soak into you a little bit as we sing a couple songs. We're going to sing, I've been told you all know, gather us in pretty, pretty well here, so um, we're going to sing that together. Mm.
when we think about uh, strength and hope, particularly the need for strength and hope, I'm drawn to the image of Jesus on the cross and particularly the words uh, that were read for us tonight. What, what was the phrase that we're going to be focusing on? Do you know? Carol? Uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Words spoken by Jesus from the cross. And the opening words to the psalm that Amy read for us. What does it mean to be forsaken? As I was thinking about this actually several um, several weeks ago, I came across this incredible passage from Uncle Tom's Cabin. The dark places of earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Telling the long, sad story of slavery, Harriet Beecher Stowe writes about this place of cruelty in this way. She says, it was a long, forsaken road, now winding through dreary pine barrens, where the wind whispered mournfully, and now over long causeways, through long cypress swamps, the doleful trees rising out of the slimy, spongy ground hung with long wreaths of funeral black moss. When I saw that passage, I thought, that, that is forsakenness. Trying to imagine what slaves must have felt like who were experience, experiencing that, that's forsakenness to me. And it reminds me of tonight's passage. It kind of maybe gives us all a glimpse of, of maybe some of the things that Jesus was feeling as he hung there on that cross. We all know forsaken places. We've all, at one point or another in our life, I think experienced a sense of forsakenness. What we'd like to give you a chance to do right now, um, if it's not too threatening, is kind of, some of you who are alone at a table, buddy up with, with tables that don't have too many people, and just talk among yourselves about this whole concept and this whole idea of forsaking, forsakenness. If you're willing to, just think of examples of people or people groups today who you might say are experiencing this sense of forsakenness. And if you want to really be vulnerable, share some of your own personal experiences about times in your life when you have felt forsaken. Okay? Can you give you about five minutes to go ahead and do that? Okay. Perhaps the most significant reason Jesus came to walk among us was to identify um, himself with us so that we could understand that we are not alone. When you think of, of forsaken people, when you think of times in your own life when you have felt forsaken, how, how did you come through that? How did God's presence manifest itself in the midst of that forsakenness? Anybody willing to, to share that? Or, or if not personally, in forsaken situations, how does God's presence become manifest? Nancy? Through other people. Through other people. Say, can you say a little more? through other people. For example, when my mother died, I said I felt very <coughs> forsaken, forlorn. And yet members of the church sent cards or they talked to me. Or, so I, I was surrounded by people who... Um, okay. Did you all hear that? Through other people. <coughs> Anybody else? I would think Doc? groups like Doctors Without Borders would certainly okay. give people hope in, in an office. Doctors Without Borders, okay, groups of people. Sometimes just something in nature, like suddenly the sun comes through the clouds or something. 
suddenly the sun comes through the clouds. Something in creation that just kind of reminds you that you're not alone. Anybody else have a willing to get a little personal? Can you think of a time when you were? Well, I couldn't get the lawn more going. <laughs> Okay. So, I mean, you know. Did it work? It did. Okay. He couldn't get his lawnmower started, if you can't hear in the back. <laughs> All right. M Mary? Uh, when my mother passed away, uh, we, were, we went to church. She passed away on, Labor, on, on Saturday of Labor Day weekend. And the first question was, are we going to go to church? And I said immediately, yes. And then I decided, maybe I better ask my dad what he thought about this. And he said, well, that's what we do on Sunday. So we did. But that particular Sunday, without knowing that my mother had passed away, the prelude was, it is well with my soul. Suddenly in the middle of all of this, I noticed the words that are, in, are, are cut into their communion table were, Continue in the faith, stable and steadfast. And there were a couple of other, there was, some, uh, there was another piece of music, and I've forgotten right now what it was. But this whole service that morning, it was like God was putting this thing on a billboard saying, I'm everything's with you. okay. Everything's okay. Anybody else here um, for whom music is just a way that God's presence really becomes manifest? Yeah. When I, when I was in Denmark, um, before I met my amazing wife, I was so incredibly homesick. You don't even know. I mean, I had never left my little town of 6,000 people, and here I was halfway around the world. Um, and the only thing that kept me going was, and I brought all these Christian tapes, these really cheesy Christian music tapes, but that was the only thing that kept me going during those times. Um, and I think that's music for a lot of people just speaks to the soul and very... Deep ways. Have you ever heard Adag a, who, is it Who's it? Who did it? Barber. Adagio for strings. When you listen to that brooding piece of music, I just know God is there. Yeah. Anything? Anybody else? Times when you have. Well, what, what, I was going to say because I was going. We were discussing different, um, you know, categories of people who must feel forsaken on the planet, like people who are trafficked. <laughs> Traffickers into slavery. Um, we were just talking about the Syrians. Yeah. And um, what was the other thing we mentioned? Uh, the Ukrainians. And the Ukrainians. People yeah, who are living. Ukrainians and Syrians. And um, what was the other, other thing we brought up? That where, where people must really feel forsaken. So abused um, children. Yeah, abused children. Like yeah. who have, like, like maybe abuse them in their home and they can't. Even though know, they're, they're there and, and they can't get away from that. So, so let's follow our train of thought. If we can reflect on those times in our lives when we have felt forsaken and God's presence has been made manifest through other people, through our church, through missionaries, through groups like Doctors Without Borders, through music, through creation, what, what is the hope? What is the strength? that we can offer to all of these very, is there any that we can offer to any of these people groups today that are feeling this and experiencing this real sense of forsakenness? What is our role in the world? Have you ever thought about that? To be there for others. To be there for them? Yes. Pray for them. Pray for them? That's exactly what we want to do right now. But we don't want to encourage you to pray in the sense that you bow your heads and say, God, be with those people in the Ukraine. Be with those families who have loved ones on that Malaysian flight. We want to give you the opportunity to begin to think about how you might pray in terms of truly becoming more involved. Um, I don't have the answer to that question. And 
all of the questions that will be asked over the next five weeks, I don't have the answers to, Nicole doesn't have the answers to. Um, we want to provide space for you to just, just think about them and to live into them a little bit and to explore how God might be leading you to be involved because there's not one way for us to answer that question. How can God use me for these forsaken people? So to, to spur that on a little bit, we've set up three stations. Um, and if you want to just sit in your seat and just reflect and meditate, feel free to do that for the next five or so minutes. But if you want to get up and actually do something, we, we have three places you can go visit. You can first come up to the table here, and um, there's some paper and colored pencils, and we would invite you to just consider some of these um, forsaken people groups and put something down on paper. A word, you can draw something, but something that might represent this forsaken people group, and then close pin it to that uh, piece of twine that's hanging across the cross. You can do that if you'd like. You can bring the paper back to your table if you're more comfortable there. Draw something, put it up. If you want to just come forward and, and light a candle that might represent that particular people group or person, um, that is struggling with forsakenness, you can do that. Or we would invite you to go back by the fireplace. There's a basket there um, with small pieces of paper and some pencils. And we would invite you to just think about, um, you know, this is probably not for those who are thinking of the Ukraine, the Ukraine right now, but if you just think of a person in your life who is feeling a sense of forsakenness, who you just need to be a little bit more sensitive to, um, somebody local, something tangible that you can perhaps do tomorrow or Friday. Write it down, put it in your pocket, carry it with you until you actually do something. Okay? So just, just tune us all out. Um, get alone with your God. Go to a station if you'd like. Just sit, pause, reflect, and consider um, how God might want to use you in light of all the forsakenness that's in our world today.
We are here because um, as followers of Christ, we believe that Jesus does give us a way to deal with the forsakenness of life. There may be other ways for other people, but for you and me, it's Jesus. And so as we deal with our brokenness, as we wrestle with our sense of being forsaken, um, Jesus is what sees us through. And as we consider um, forsaken people groups around the world, as followers of Christ, we cannot just, um, just close our eyes to it. We're called to identify with them just as God identifies with us in Jesus on the cross. So we're going to explore that, what it's going to look like for us over the next few weeks together. Um, I pray that as you drive home, hopefully the storm is gone. It's now zero degrees outside. Um, but, uh, you'll have a chance tonight, maybe after the kids are in bed or when you're all by yourself, to just, just continue to kind of ponder and reflect and allow this spirit, this spirit that is constantly moving. We don't have to wait till Pentecost to celebrate the spirit, but to recognize that this spirit um, continues to move and to speak and to challenge and to take us deeper. May that be your experience, not just tonight, but throughout this Lenten season. So come back. Um, I am one of these people, maybe it's my Roman Catholic background, I don't know, but you cannot experience, truly experience the joy of Easter unless you take advantage of this season of Lent. Um, find opportunities to just be still and to reflect and to pray fast a little bit um, and take that time you'd normally take eating a meal and just being still listening i guarantee if you take advantage of this season and truly live into it easter will have more meaning than ever so thanks for coming um, who would like to close us in prayer and judy keys is not here today to tell me that i have to do it so <laughs> And I do have a session meeting to go to. Barbara, thank you very much. Um, Lord, uh, we thank you for gathering us here this evening. And we thank you for Reverend Bob for leading us to this wonderful evening of um, sharing and worship. And we ask you always to guide us with your spirit, light our light our pathway and, and guide our footsteps and help us um, see your way, Lord, in our lives um, this evening and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.